This video is about the it's about the the cube. More specifically the dork cube or the black cube. So right here is the dark cube in the atomic museum, the dark cube behind me, Heisenberg's race for the for the bomb. This is a big chain of uranium cubes. That cube behind you over there. Let's take a look at it. This is the Heisenberg cube. That came out of this chain. Okay. That's the real. That's thing. an actual one. That's not. That's 99 percent pure uranium 238. And this is the cube right here. That's it. it. You're looking at it. Okay. Weighs about weighs about 12 to 15 pounds. So, what does it do? What does one of these cubes do? That's that's what's used in the uh, reactors. A lot of people may not know this, but when Hitler, when Nazi, when the Nazis were trying to get an atomic weapon, there was a race for the atomic weapon, and under Oppenheimer here in the United States, the United States, we got to a nuclear weapon first. But Adolf Hitler and the Nazis were also trying to get an atomic weapon. The Heisenberg was Hitler, I call him Hitler's Oppenheimer. Yeah. He was in charge of the nuclear program for Hitler to try to develop an atomic bomb. Right. And believe it or not, a lot of people don't believe it, they never got the atomic weapon. The Germans. The Germans didn't. This so the Nazis a, would be able to. This is the Nazis. And they were using specifically these dark cubes. He had 664 of them. Perhaps he was too short of 666. Just laying it out there. How close was he, Hitler? He and here's, got, a, here's he an never, image of he what he had. Got, he never got this to a chain reaction. Okay. Uh, he had 664 of these cubes on it. Yeah. And uh, so this is hanging over a heavy water pit. But he never got a chain reaction. I just noticed here. So he had 664. Maybe he was. Maybe he was only too short. That would be well, 666 was. if you went. Uh, I just found that interesting. <laughs> <in> the <thing. laughs> yeah. Now a cube, in and of itself, no matter what color it is, is just well, it's just a geometric one of our geometric shapes. A three-dimensional, six-sided, geometrical shape. That's what a cube is, all of its own accord. But the cube, if it's a dark cube or a black cube, can, not always, but can be affiliated with the, with the god Saturn or the sixth planet, just as it is a six-sided cube. Saturn is often interchangeable with the word Satan. Saturn also, if we go all the way back in time during the times of the Akkadians and the Sumerians, would be affiliated with the god Inki. You had Enlil and Inki, like good cop, bad cop, to the ancient Sumerian Akkadian world, what would later become Babylon. Now, the black cube is seen often popularly in major pieces of artwork in large cities like here behind me in Manhattan and other locations, other major cities around the world like these black cubes. In fact, King Og of Bashan, it's commonly written that he was, that his tombstone was a sort of a black, it would have been rectangular, but it would have been essentially a cube. And that that black cube had fallen from the, fallen from the sky like a falling star. Here pictured behind me, this is a spiritual or claimed meditational or religious spiritual room in the United Nations. In the center of it is a is a black cube, a black so it's, it's a black cubish object and it goes to an unnamed god in a kind of a bland trapezoid shaped room, a black cube for worship at the United Nations. Also, of course, infamously in the endless chain of the Hellraiser movies, the main character Pinhead that would come to drag one's soul to hell, then torture them. The nexus between the world of the living and the eternal damnation was with the Cube, seen in Hellraiser's main character's 
hands right there. And of course here also is a cubed stone for the, for the Freemasons, the Masonic temples having the famous compass on it with the letter G, whatever that may stand for, on a cube. And others, most notably such as Islam, they have the, the Kaaba stone, which they believe takes the sins away, and they walk in circles around the, around the Kaaba stone in Mecca. On the other end of the fence, you have intelligence agencies, notably Israeli intelligence agencies, named, and I'll be careful on this one, the dark, or I think more appropriately, the black cube. But a cube, though it may in some instances, not all, have just a geometric object, is what it is, one of our three-dimensional geometric objects. A cube may in many instances have occult symbolism or pagan symbolism to it, or dimensional. may also have symbolism that goes for the god Saturn, or the sixth planet. But a cube is, in all reality, it's just an object here in our reality, our three-dimensional reality that we live in. Now, a cube, if we were to take a cube and we were to unfold it into a two-dimensional reality, the cube would become, so this is a three-dimensional a cube, like a Rubik's cube is a three-dimensional object. It has nine squares. Nine is another occult number, three on each strip, but like the ninth gate. Well, if you take a, if you take a cube, a three-dimensional object with six sides, and you were to unfold it into a two-dimensional object, you would interestingly enough get a get a cross. Now a cross has comprised, this is the symbol of the Christian faith, would be the cross. Another dimensional object. A cross, a cube unfolded, makes into six squares. The diametric opposite of a dark cube might be a cross. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Here in my pre-flood book, I have a section that deals, we have sections that deal in these parts of the book with time, consciousness, space, and matter. After all, six, right there, six in Hebrew would be the Vav or six, the number of man. In six days, God created, no matter what anyone wants to view those days as, in six days, God created the heavens and the earth, and on the sixth day, God created man. On the seventh day, God rested. Now, right over here, you have what Salvador Dali portrayed as Jesus on what is called a tesseract right here. A tesseract would be a three-dimensional object unfolded into a fourth dimensional space. I tend to like the term higher dimensional space more than fourth dimensional seems very limiting, but the concept is identical. That it's opening up into a, a higher or a fourth dimensional space. I have on this little chalkboard two different characters. So this right here, this is Tom, and this on this side is with the dress on, only had the color red. This is this is Sally. And they live in a two-dimensional world. They live on this piece of erasable chalkboard, Tom and Sally. They are two-dimensional characters. Now, Tom and Sally, in their two-dimensional world, this is Tom and Sally's world right here. And I live in a three-dimensional world. I have the benefit of this extra dimension, meaning that I can come up face-to-face -face with Tom or with Sally, and they don't even know that I'm there. More than this, if I were to take my finger and pass it through Tom and Sally's world, they would just see a circle open and close. In fact, they would probably only see a line get bigger and smaller. Take that a step further. Tom, he can't even, he can't even see Sally 
as she is. You see, when Tom looks over at Sally, all he would see is a straight line. Tom cannot see these extra dimensions that I have the, the benefit of. In other words, Tom can't even see Sally the way that she is. Which brings up another question, because if God was living in a higher dimension, looking down on us, what are we covered with? What would God see when he looks from his higher dimension down at us? Cube is a three-dimensional object with six sides. And these are the, these are the dark cubes. And here's the, yeah, and here's the, the town. The same picture with what would what he was doing? Would it have worked? Yes. Could it have worked? Yes, but he never, never finished the experiment. It never got to a controlled chain reaction. Mm -hmm. Had he got it first, he would have won the war. Well, we don't know. Uh, well, we don't could. know that. It would have been closer. He, did, he didn't get it. And a cross is a cube unfolded, as if someone wanted us to understand these simple things. A cross made of six squares. So in Salvador Dali's famous painting of Jesus on the cross, but the cross is a tesseract. Tesseract is the higher dimensional object. He is essentially portraying that Jesus is the nexus for number six, the number of man, Vav is the number six in Hebrew, is the nexus for man between not hell and earth, but heaven and earth. And these depictions, like I just showed you of Tom and Sally, are in this book. Again, I pose to you, what does God see when he looks down at us? Are we black cubes or are we crosses? This is the atomic, this is the atomic section of the museum here. As you probably saw this symbol, even in the Back to the Future movies. Now, right over here is right over here is the Back to the Future car. X marks the spot. The symbol behind me, these are Hebrew letters that just scroll through. Sometimes I find it interesting where they fall. The Tav, the ancient symbol of the Tav, back there on the screen, Tav is the 22nd letter. There's the X, 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet. That that just came up is the seventh letter. It is the Zion in Hebrew. The Tav is the 22nd or the last letter. It is the cross. To be very clear what it is that I'm telling you, this behind me, this is modern Hebrew. It's comprised of 22 letters. This language begins, this X looking symbol back here, this is actually the number one, that's the Aleph. The Aleph, the number two is the Bet. This language behind me, this is where we get the word Alpha Bet, Aleph and the Bet. If we come all the way down to the 22nd letter, it's gonna be this symbol down here that in its ancient form will look like this, this cross. But in its modern form, this symbol right here looks kind of like a doorway, a gateway. And this little dot inside, well, that's actually a yod. A yod is a number 10. 10 is a universal number of completion. It's also the symbol right here for God himself. A little yod looks like a thought, an idea. The Spirit of God, a little yod just dangling between the gateway to reach in from heaven to earth. A little yod, which brings us to this symbol right here, this doorway with the yod inside, the modern form of the 
Tov that you see right there. There's the little Yod coming through. That's the symbol for God himself coming through this doorway right here. Here's the Tov on the other side. This is the Tov in its ancient form, meaning sign or ancient mark. Here in its two-dimensional form, a symbol for man. Man, the sign or mark, the nexus, the X that marks the spot, coming forward in time, creates the gateway through back there, the Zion. Isn't it stunning how these numbers come up? Watch where this goes in a second. Becomes the doorway within which the Spirit of God, the Yod, God himself, reaches through from heaven to earth, through and to save the number six, man. So, here's the Back to the Future car. And it's known for, what did they have to grab in that movie? They had to grab the plutonium. You had to go 88 miles per hour. I always found that to be an interesting number. Eight in Hebrew is the number of new beginnings, so that'd be like a double of a new beginning. I love personally the number 88. And of course the and of course the the license plate on the car that spun around in Back to the Future Part One was the license plate that said out of time. And over here you had the the flux capacitor and it makes the shape it makes the interesting shape of a Y. It's kind of a replica of what that looked like in the back of the car, the, the Y symbol. The Y would be a Vav in Hebrew. A Vav, the letter Vav in Hebrew, this is ancient Hebrew that I have on the back of the screen right here. 22 letters of ancient Hebrew. And we're going to count inward from the ancient Aleph. Here we go. Ancient Aleph. One, two, three, four, five, and uh-oh, number six right there. That letter looks a little like the Y or the, the symbol of man, the flux capacitor in the Back to the Future car, the DeLorean. The number six, the number of man, the Vav right there. There's two sixes. There's my ancient form. Right here is my modern form. If we come from our, our Y, our flux capacitor that needs to go 88 miles per hour to go forward in time, our Vav, our symbol of the, of the man, the number six right here. Well, if we were going forward in time, forward from the cross, and we wanted to pass through this doorway, this gateway within which the Spirit of God dwells. Well, I'd like to take my cross right here, my cross with the number six, six squares on it. And I'd like to take this number six, and I'd like to only go for the arms of the cross and move my six to right up here. You have seven days in your week. In fact, everything here in our reality, our realm goes round and round, round and round, round and round. Your clocks, your weeks, your years, your months, your days, round and round. On the seventh day, God rested. On the sixth day, God made man. On the seventh day, God rested. Well, the eighth day is always the new beginning, the number eight. Eight is the day that the Hebrews would circumcise the children on the eighth day. Said that Jesus rose, came out of the tomb on the eighth day, the new beginning. Jesus was crucified on the, was crucified on the sixth day and then put into the, the tomb. He was in the tomb for the seventh day, just as God rested. And on the eighth day, he would come forth from the tomb. So this would be Friday, he's crucified on the cross. This would be Saturday, the seventh day. And this would be the beginning of the new week. Sunday, the eighth day. So, 
Number six, right there, crucified on the cross for man. Seventh day, going through the tomb. And then on the eighth day, the new beginning, the stone would roll away, opening the doorway within which the Yod, the Spirit of God, would reach through. Now, why don't we just look at that one other way, if we're going back and forward in time here. Man, created on the sixth day, the Vav, man is the number six, passing through the ancient symbol of the, the Zion on the screen right there, the number seven and making it to the ancient symbol of the Het, the new beginning. Now the Het, or the number eight, just like there were eight people that came through that narrow doorway on Noah's Ark, there were eight people entering a new beginning. Well, the Het right there, that symbol, that's where we today get our infinity symbol is from the ancient het, the number eight right there. Six, vov, our flux capacitor, or number of man, zion right there, the, the number of the day of rest, and then eight right there, the infinity symbol, the gateway, the doorway between heaven and earth, the new beginning. And of course, in Back to the Future, to go back or forward in time, you don't just need the flux capacitor or the vehicle, the man. You also need to throw that puppy in hyperdrive and hit 88 miles per hour to go to go back in time so you went from you went from nuclear weapons to concepts that uh well where you're throwing it in gear and you got to have the electricity to hit the car energize the flex capacitor the number y hit your 88 miles per hour and you are going back in time and of course the plate said out of time i want to make it very clear i i love the number 88 the number eight in Hebrew, the Het, that's the, that's the number of new beginnings. It's also where we get our infinity symbol. Two eights would be like a double portion, the cross came up, would be like a double portion of that. I want to thank you for watching this presentation on the, on the dark cube. A dark cube, that would be very different from a from a cross. I believe it was the Lord himself that stopped. Adolf Hitler had 664 specifically of these dark cubes to make an atomic weapon against the United States. That's too shy of 666. I hold my case that I believe strongly that God himself has had his hands on this United States. I'm Trey Smith of God in a Nutshell. God bless every last one of you and your families on the other side of the screen.